Hey guys, today I just want to document going from uh, Packer as the package manager to lazy.envim. And I didn't really have a, a big reason to switch. I was noticing some strange performance stuff, especially with trees here. It was kind of lagging. Um, but there was nothing that stuck out as being extremely poignant and made me want to change. Um, one of the things about Emacs that I found a little bit, or about NeoVim, sorry, that I found a little bit frustrating compared to Emacs is kind of the spread of files and the different files that get read at different times, FT plugin, after. Um, I much prefer the like modes where you have like Lua mode, JavaScript mode, etc. Um, and then just having one big literate config so that you can collapse everything down so that even though it is a super large file you would get just those bullet point headings for each topic um, especially the after folder I feel like um, I wasn't 100% sure what should go in there and what shouldn't so if I come here I have my LSP setup which worked the syntax um, the setups for all the plugins just so once the plugins are loaded it calls them and I feel like this makes sense because you want to call everything after the plugins, but I wasn't too sure. And if I just go into my plugins here, um, you can see that kind of weird shift with tree sitter where it like does that little thing. I find that a little bit annoying. And sometimes I feel like some of these functions don't work. NeoGit does, so this config function works, but I just, I got mixed results with having the config here, and you know, I had a little bit of time yesterday, so I decided to try to change everything, and that's what I'll go over in part two of this video. I just wanted to show that weird kind of tree sitter thing, and then show how that disappeared once I started using lazy.envim. And I'm sure that's on my end of, about how I laid out my file structure, but it's one of those things where there's no real blueprint um, and it can be kind of hard to figure out what goes where and that's why like lazy envim it feels a little bit more simplistic because instead of relying on an after directory or trying to make sure things get loaded at the right time it kind of takes that weight off your shoulders and seems to do a pretty decent job um, I haven't had too many issues with it but I've only been using it for about a day or two so I don't want to uh, sing its praises too much yet all right, I'll be right back for part two where I've got lazy and all loaded up. Hey guys, so back again with my NeoVim configuration and right now I've got uh, lazy installed and I switched up my configuration just a little bit. I feel like it's a bit simpler. Still got my snippets, but now everything is in that Lua folder except for the FT plugins, which I view kind of like modes and Emacs. So I'll go through that really quickly. These are a little bit less important. These are just some custom functions. But the main thing that I did that I think is working is just putting everything in this config directory. And then just to separate everything, I have this quote unquote ID, IDE directory, which has some of the more IDE-like features that I want out of NeoVim. So just that kind of separation and having it all in the Lua folder makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to work with. And especially because the documentation in NeoVim is pretty good, but for directory layout and stuff, I just, I wasn't having the greatest time figuring out how that worked. Um, and one of the things that I mentioned in the last part of this video was just how I was getting some weird flickering with the colors as TreeSitter was starting up. And I think that might have been because I built um, NeoVim from source, but I do feel that that has gone away now. So I think that it, it might have been because I was using a different, like an unstable branch, but as you can see, there's no flickering. Once I open it, I've got full syntax coloring without having to worry too much. So all this stuff is just copied right from the directory. And then I copied over most of the same things. One thing I like versus Packer is these config functions all work perfectly. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Load up time was like negligibly fast before, and I'd say it's a little bit faster, but I, I don't notice too much. Um, but very clean with the config functions. Um, instead of run, you have build here, so you have to do all this stuff when you're 
kind of setting up certain functions. But then the thing that I really like, which I guess you could technically do with Packer as well, but again, I was having some, some issues with that, is you can source different files. I'll try to find where I did that here. I have, where is it? Ah, uh, yeah, right here, require ide.syntax, and then I have require ide.lspconf. So what I did with those guys is I just have the tree sitter set up here. I've got all the settings, and then I've got the, the folding stuff that I wanted to use. Um, and all this stuff is kind of within the realm of tree sitter, so it only makes sense to have when tree sitter is loaded. So I figured that having that right here makes a lot of sense, or it's actually in the syntax part right here. But um, the other one that I have is LSP configuration, where I have uh, CMP and Vim CMP. I've got the setup for that, and then I load all these key maps. And again, these key maps are pretty, or they're completely relevant to just uh, the LSP functionality. So it's nice to be able to sequester these and then load them with the plugins that they correspond to. Again, I'm sure you could do this with Packer, but it makes a bit more sense to do it with Lazy just because it's loading everything Lazy. Um, and pretty simple, nothing too crazy. It's a lot of code, but most of it is from the repos where you get these packages. Like all this stuff, most of it is, some of it's um, like custom added, but most of it's uh, just straight from the repo, especially most of the CMP stuff. Um, all in all, really happy with Lazy. I feel like if you look here, almost instant startup time. Let me see if I can measure this. Yeah, I think that when I did it before with uh, Packer, it was 0.05 um, for user. So a bit of a drop off, but again, nothing crazy. Um, you're not gonna notice a couple tenths of a millisecond, but yeah, all in all, that's pretty much it. If there's any plugins that you guys would like to see me review or talk about, let me know. Uh, again, this is all part of my switch over to NeoVim from Emacs using Tmux. I'm working on some like command line tools to kind of replicate certain things in Emacs. Hopefully I'll be able to do those and I'll make some videos on them. And one of the videos I'll make soon is on Neoorg here. But let's see, parser, ah, there we go. Just installing itself. Let's see here, there we go. Perfect, so yeah, wasn't a real error, but more of a, just getting everything installed. So you can see here, it does a decent job, nothing crazy. I've got a couple key bindings that I'm using that I'll go over more later, but there are some idiosyncrasies that I'm not a huge fan of, like here with the indentation, um, it just kind of fights with you a bit. But again, nothing crazy, and to get around that, you can use this where you have uh, this side buffer, and then you don't have to worry about some of the indentation that you'd otherwise get from that. Because uh, if I come here and I try to do the same thing, you can see the indentation is all over the place. So definitely some roughness around the edges with NeoOrg, but I'll try to see if I can smooth those out. If you guys want to see, I'll do a little tutorial on how I use this or how I'm going to start using it to try to ease some of my org over into NeoOrg just so I have everything in NeoVim. All right, that's it for today, guys.